Erin had a voice to die for. She was 22 and loved children, loved music, loved dancing, loved working with young people. It was a sunny Sunday morning and Erin was driving for over shopping. She was a good driver, so safe. Suddenly I saw something coming through the sky. The underside of a car out of control. The crash was horrific. I still feel the weight of Erin's head on my shoulder. The gurgle of her breathing. The smell of burning rubber. The smell of her perfume. I was in a coma when Erin was buried. Sometimes I miss her so much I can't breathe. That day she insisted we all put on seat belts. That's why three of us are still alive and not wiped out by dangerous driving. Because of my lovely daughter Erin. Fran Mitchell from Greystones Wicklow climbed Kilimanjaro for charity. And at 27, he had so many more peaks left to climb. Fran loved sport, he ran marathons, and loved his work as a psychiatric nurse. One Friday night, after working a long shift, he went to a late movie with a friend. He drove home, stone cold sober, and at 1.30 a.m. he crashed into a wall and died instantly. It became clear that Fran dozed off at the wheel, just minutes from home. I know because I'm Fran's brother, and I miss him every day. Our family hopes Fran's story saves lives, maybe even yours. I love my football. I was named Player of the Year. I miss it, the team spirit. I had a promising trade, good money, nice fiancé, and it's all gone. I made a stupid mistake that night. I'd been drinking and then I drove. I was on my own when the car left the road over a wall and into a field. My seatbelt saved my life. I'd never heard of brain injury until I got one. It's ironic. Drinking and driving did this to me, and now I look drunk all the time. If you think drinking and driving is cool, just think of me. Never risk it. I know what I'm talking about. At 17, Emma was beautiful, inside and out. She loved living and she loved giving. On Valentine's night, she and her friend took a lift. The car hit a pole and she was thrown out. She died at the side of the road. The funeral was huge. You've no idea how many lives are devastated by a car crash. The next year on Valentine's Day, Emma got more flowers than all her friends, but they were all on her grave. Emma's lovely face was so badly smashed, she had to have a closed coffin. If she could speak now, she'd say, be careful who you take a lift from and don't go on belted. I know because I'm her mother and I think about her every day, every hour. Our son James went out a perfectly healthy young fellow of 19. He came back in a coffin. He was training to be a chef and everything was just coming right for him. He'd been at the Debs Ball in for my and had a couple of drinks. Later he decided not to wait for a taxi but to walk home in the dark. He was struck by an articulated lorry on the N8 and was killed instantly. Having to identify his body and tell his sister was the worst night of my life. Oddly, I miss him most on fine sunny days when I think he should be alive and out enjoying himself. If only he had worn the visibility jacket that night. When his headstone went up, I finally understood the meaning of the phrase written in stone. It's final. The last time I spoke with Connor that Saturday, I asked him about a movie he'd just seen, The Fast and the Furious. It's not your kind of movie, he said, and off he went cheerily. He was 15, out all the time, full of life. The crash happened that night near in the Shannon. Uh, six out of seven died. Connor was sitting behind the driver and his neck was broken. The whole community was devastated all around. The sadness and sense of loss never leave you. 
I remember when I was at the All Ireland when Cork won. He should have been there with me. Between 15 and 70, there's an awful lot of living to do. Don't throw it all away. It's gone forever if you do. Sarah enjoyed life to the full. She was strong, great fun, yet a rock of sense. She had plans to see the world, but she didn't even get to see her 20th birthday. It was a Saturday afternoon when Sarah died instantly in a car crash. She was almost home. I had the privilege of watching my daughter being born, and I had to watch her where she died. Her whole future was crushed in a second. Life is fragile, especially on the roads. You can't be careful enough. Even when you think you're safe, you're in danger. When you lose a child, you lose your future. We lost ours. If you don't wear a seatbelt, you're eight times more likely to be ejected from your vehicle. And that's very bad news. Most ejections don't get to me at all because they've hit the road at 100 kilometres an hour. And they don't have a graze, they don't have a face. They may not have a head or limbs. They're just spinning down the road, dead. And what happens if you wear your seatbelt the wrong way is equally mind-bending. If you're crazy enough to wear your seatbelt under your arm, and if you reach me after a crash, it will have sliced into you like cheese wire, lacerating your vital organs. And with children not properly restrained, it's even worse. Smashing forward through the windshield, brain damage, spinal injury. And believe me, spinal injury is not just for the weekend, it's for life. When the ambulance rushes somebody in from a car crash, the family come into the emergency department expecting what they see on TV. But this isn't TV, this is real life. And when the team and I have finished the fight to save someone's life, it's the cleaning ladies who scrub the blood off the floor and pick up to pieces. When I declare someone dead, I phone the coroner, I gather myself for a few moments, and then I go to see the family, usually the parents. This is the worst possible news for you. We've done the best for your son, but sadly now he's dead. And you see those people dissolving, their lives dissolving, just falling apart. If you're a young road user, in love with life and fun, you don't ever want your mum to meet me doing my job, do you? As human beings, we think that the worst possible outcome is death. As one mother said to me, Dr Carroll, there are worse things than dying. And I had to agree with her. People are surviving with catastrophic injuries. And yes, they're surviving, but they are not aware. The tragedy is that the vast majority of road traffic collisions are completely avoidable. That's very hard for any family member to come to terms with. And they'll always ask, why or if only? There's before and there's after, and there is no turning back. My accident was on a Monday. I went into work. I was a social worker and I had a lot on my mind. The next day was my graduation. I don't know what happened. Just from what I was told about two o'clock, I was driving and bang. It's like part of me died that day. I can never accept this, never. You can take your mind off the road for a split second, but that all it takes, that split second. Mark was 19 when he was killed. He had been out celebrating with his friends, I had had a few drinks, and he swayed out onto the road and got hit by a car. He was there in the morgue. I was in such shock at that stage that um, I didn't actually realise he was dead. 
It was like as though there was a hole in my heart. Until you're affected, you don't realise how many people are actually killed needlessly on the roads. I can't make peace with this. That, that you know, there's nothing. This chap that I was so fond of is is no longer there, and he will never walk in the door again.